The Labour Party launched its manifesto today. Sir Keir Starmer barely had time to get through the first page of that document when this happened. My generation is being let down by the That's Labour Party and this manifesto. Yeah. You say that you're offering change, but it's the same old Tory policies. We need yeah. better. The climate can't wait. The climate can't wait. We need a Green New Deal now. Yeah. We gave up on being a party of protest five years ago. We want to be a party of power. Everybody who actually pays tax was worried about how much Labour would want to wrestle from your pockets. Being very, very clear, particularly in relation to working people, no increase in income tax, no increase in national insurance and no increase in VAT. Absolutely clearly set out in this manifesto. Well, what's also clear is that there appears to be net tax rises of £8.6 billion. That means tax as a share of GDP will be 37.4% in 2028 to 29, the highest in history. We better hope those non-doms stick around, hadn't we? Or anyone with any money at all. I must say, I think there has been what appears to be a typical dose of left-wing bias in the establishment broadcast media so far this campaign. Last night, Mr Starmer forgot where he was, confusing Grimsby with Hull. I was so impressed and, you know, when I saw those apprentices here in Hull who had skilled jobs that they were proud of doing with the... Yeah, I mean, this might help him. Hull is a, a different part of the country entirely. Uh, it's in a different county, actually. The UK's longest single-span suspension bridge is between the two of those areas there. And that got zero traction in the media last night. Meanwhile... ITV managed to drag Ed Davey away from pratting around on some kind of assault course to get a midlife crisis makeover. He's giving it blue steel. Oh, yeah. And then if you want to come on, come on Ed, yeah, sucking your cheek Do it. Let's do it. Clench your buttocks. No summer outfits complete without a pair of sunglasses. Yeah. Cool dad. Cool dad. And also, oh, yeah, how do you feel about her? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Now, that. <laughs> Is the perfect summer look. Oh, and do you remember when Channel 4 decided to get Mr Starmer on Sunday brunch, I think it was, to do a puff piece cooking a tandoori salmon? Right, let's put it on. Looks good. Oh, I've broken that one. Yeah. yeah. What do we think? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, okay. really good. What do you think? Yeah. Really yeah. good. Good? Yeah. yeah. Really good. I mean, I can only assume that Ofcom are all over this like a rash. Have ITV and Channel 4 invited Rishi Sunak and Nigel Farage to cook a tandoori salmon or prance around, dressed like a divorce supply teacher? Here's how Farage was treated by the press when he had a milkshake thrown over him. Not the first time, and I think quite a humbling moment for Nigel Farage. He was here in Clacton to launch his local campaign... Well, now we're hearing that apparently the BBC have also biffed Nigel Farage from a debate, instead preferring to platform the SNP. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's absolutely insane and appears to be an attempt to silence him, doesn't it? Especially in light of the polling data, which I will come on to. Uh, and we all know how ITV stitched Rishi Sunak up by releasing this pre-interview footage. Prime Minister. Gosh, hello. Good to see you. Very nice to see you. Hey, sorry I'm to well, have kept you. you. No, not at all. I know we you've been in Normandy. Yeah, it all just ran over. There was, it was incredible, but it, it just ran over everything. I'm sure it was a... So apologies for keeping you. No, not at all. I'm sure it was a powerful trip. I mean, so pertinent as well this year, you know, considering what's happened in Ukraine. Yeah, which and, I haven't seen you know, President Biden's remarks, but I, yeah, I think that's kind of the echo, I think, what yeah. he said. Did you get to meet any of the veterans, or were you... Oh, no, no, did no, you gosh, just lots. have to do the oh, ceremonial? Oh, my, lots. Over yesterday okay, and today. Yeah, I've already spoke to almost everyone that was there, I hope. I mean, of course, Rishi Sunak walked into that by actually leaving D-Day early to be interviewed by the bloke who won awards for going berserk about some cake during lockdown. So, what do you think? Is there a left-wing bias in the media that is clear to see at this election?